Hi everyone! So, following my last poll dart video where I discussed books one and two, this video I'm going to be discussing books three and four. Now, I'm going to do the same kind of structure uh, in which I'm going to talk about an aspect of the poll dart world and then I'm going to um, have a spoiler section, at which point you can either stop watching if you don't want to be spoiled, or if you want to be spoiled, then please feel free to watch while I talk about more um, specific parts of, of the two books of uh, books three and four about. Um, I have a feeling for this video that section is going to be rather long because these um, these books there is a well I, I'll just come out and say it now there is a monumental event that happens in book four which will affect everybody to the very last book of book twelve. And it was at book four um, where Winston Graham stopped writing the Paul Dart books. It kind of felt like he probably felt that right, he's going to put them to bed. And he waited 20 years to then write the next one. And of course, in that 20 year gap, that you know, the 20 years, um, was the 1970s, which is when the BBC were adapting Paul Dark, um, you know, for the original series that they did in the 70s, which I really wouldn't recommend, but I'll talk about that in a later, in a later video. Um, <laughs> uh, and so, because I gather, because of the the excitement of the series. I don't know if it was, uh, you know, he was pressured into doing it or whatever, but thankfully he, um, or if he just wanted to start writing Paul Dark again, um, but thankfully he began writing again and, um, you know, he, uh, he continued on with these amazing books, but yeah, there's a lot to talk about. There's, um, so as you can imagine, because he had that long gap, there's certain storylines that he really ties up and some things that he let, he leaves wide open. Um, but yeah, but I'll talk more about those specific elements in the spoiler section, but you know, right. So what I want to talk about in this video for an aspect of pulled up um, is how Winston writes historical events, historical facts. And I have to say, I think he is one of the best writers, um, historical um, writers I've ever come across. He, The way in which he, he writes this stuff is so easy. Now, you can have some writers um, who are very, you know, they they write so much in-depth detail about things. You kind of find like you've got like a hundred pages or so reading about something which doesn't really necessarily have a significance on the um, the, the course of the book, what they're trying to say, you know, it, it's like, I, I, it does, it as a reader that is kind of really frustrating that you're bogged down with all of these detailed little descriptions of how things look, how things, you know, textures across and, you know, different um, points of the day, what people were doing and such, um, it can get quite weighted down sometimes. But what Winston is able to do, and absolutely brilliantly, is to be able to weave this information very easily into the narrative and doesn't make you, um, doesn't make you realise that you're, you're kind of learning history at the same time. So for example, obviously the mine is something that's very imp important to Paul Dar uh, to Ross um, during the, you know, during these books. It's the key thing that brings him money. I didn't know anything about mining at all <laughs> until I picked up this book and I learned so much um, about it, the techniques that they use to be able to, you know, to actually go down the mine, things that, you know, the various systems of knowing how, how many men were down there and, uh, and all this lot. Uh, it, 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 I found that really interesting. And also how he describes um, historical events, like, for example, you know, in the, yeah, as I mentioned in my previous video, how Ross is at, at war um, in, in, in America in, in that first book and how he explains, even though he's only there for a short amount of time and it's only referred to, you know, in, in a sense, very little because we literally, you know, turn up, you know, he has his accident and uh, and then he's home and they sort of, it gets mentioned by characters who he talks with um, about it, but they don't talk in depth about what's specifically going on at which point because there's no need to have all that information. And he, he's able to 
you know, explain it so well. And going, you know, into books three and four, we're going into kind of French Revolution and it, it, all, you know, this kind of stuff. Um, so it, it's very interesting how he's able to weave these into narrative. And like I said, some little details, like the way in which Demelza makes her bread, it sounds so you know so little there's no need in you know for that much detail but the and he don't he only gives the detail that he needs to convey what is going on in a scene and then once it's done it's done he moves on he doesn't he doesn't focus on it um again after that so while yeah i love how natural it is you really feel like you're in a situation and i love also that characters are finding out about things the way that they would have done in that time so for example they're finding out um through papers or you know from letters which were passed to a friend to saying oh this is what happened to us today um here in france or something um and it's dated like three weeks previously because the amount of time it took to get, you know, a letter or something of, of, uh, at that time from overseas. So it, it's really accurate in ways that you don't expect it to be. And that makes it all the more realistic and natural. And uh, yeah, I think he's absolutely fantastic when it comes to the historical facts um, surrounding Paul Dart both day to day and also things relating to um, history of war and, and, and such. Okay. So that's me finished talking about historical events because now I want to really talk about spoilers um, of these two books because there is so much going on. This video, the majority of it is going to be me doing a spoiler section. So I'm really sorry for those of you who don't want to see the spoiler section and turn away. But, you know, unfortunately I have to. It's really, it's the way it's got to be. Sorry. Okay, so. Oh, sorry about that. I just knocked my table. <laughs> my computer's on. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so the three, the books three and four are Jeremy Poldock and Warlagen. Obviously, Warlagen relates to George Warlagen. But who's Jeremy Poldock, you ask? Why? Well, I can tell you right now, because here we go, spoiler section. If you don't want to know this, turn off now. Jeremy Poldark is Ross and Demelza's son. He is born right, literally right at the end of this book. It's the thinnest book out of the Poldark series, um, but there's still quite a bit going on. Um, there is, with Jeremy's arrival, it comes at a very strange time. Um, obviously, we've got the aftermath of Ross being arrested at the end of the second book um, for uh, going onto a ship and stealing from from it. But it was a ship. Well, in the book, it's two ships, um, should I say. Uh, in the recent TV adaptation, they just did the one ship. Um, it basically was written adrift on, uh, you know, on the beach by Polder and they just literally he picked up and so did all the other villagers anything that washed up onto his land because that technically once it hits his land it's his property but he never went out on the boats but he's been arrested because they say he was out on the boat um stealing directly from it um so that's what his trial is about and thankfully he gets found not guilty yay um so it's very interesting him then carrying on with that and of course George is at the epicenter of it because he wanted to and Ross to be arrested and all this lot and get put away but of course it doesn't and um, George is constantly being just an absolute pain um because he just wants to see Ross destroyed because he's totally jealous of him um but what's very interesting about this book is that this about sorry I'm talking about Jeremy Poldark here this is a very interesting one because Ross is starting to notice Elizabeth more because Elizabeth She's been a sneaky little devil. Um, she is starting to tempt Ross. It, it, it's, I suppose you could say she means to, but the ways, the ways that she's talking to him, she's interacting with him, he's feeling himself, feeling like how he was before the war, where he's noticing her when she walks to a room, he goes to speak to her, he, you know, he makes sure he does things for her. Um, and so Demel's is feeling neglected, and it's really sad. Um, but what happens with Demelza in this book, I find so intriguing, and I'm so glad that he wrote it, um, in that Demelza gets tempted by another man. Now, you probably go, what? What the heck? Why is she being tempted by another man? That's not possible. She can't do that. Yada, yada, yada. Think about it. 
she has remember in the in the book she was 12 when she first met ross the only other men in her life that took notice of her you know well not respected but you know took notice of her before that were her father and her six brothers they never treated her as a human being they never treated her as an equal as someone with a mind or anything and then ross comes along and sees her in a completely different way he's the first person to do that in her life and then he starts to turn away from her now she doesn't do this to retaliate she just meets a man who intrigues her it's the first man she's only about 20 years old mind when this is happening it's, you know, it's a total stranger, acknowledges her. Is she certain to really fit into society? Society, they absolutely love her. Um, and then comes this young man of her age who speaks his mind like her, who, you know, really likes her for who she is. And he's really, they really suit one another. So it's no, no surprise that she gets her head turned, you know, even though you know where that leads to is not in anything but it's very interesting in how she reacts to it and how she tells ross about it because they are totally open in their relationship they tell each other everything and that's what i love about their relationship it's so complex and they are so fantastic that they tell each other everything even the worst possible things in the world even though sometimes i will admit they do take their time to tell each other these things sometimes but at least they tell each other they have that open eyes and it's no wonder that their marriage lasts and lasts and lasts so many years um there is um you know as i said uh there there is a child that they have together it takes to melza a long time to tell ross because ross um you know he's going through his stuff um with the mine at, at the moment and partnership with francis and and such and they're kind of they have issues is farming better for them to do so because they've got some troubles she's reluctant to tell him um you know and uh, so she keeps <laughs> she keeps it quiet as long as she absolutely possibly can literally she's, she's showing before she's um able to tell him um and you know he's quite perplexed by it um but it leads you know to something nice it leads to a child so you can't really complain can you now book four war Lagan. now i will describe this book and please pardon my language i know i know there's probably people out there who don't like hearing swearing and such but i'm gonna say it this is the book where the shit hits the fan in really tremendous style in such a monumental way i cannot believe he waited 20 years to carry on writing this book series after what he did um what well, or what he uh, he wrote shall i say um miss uh, you know mr graham he is uh, right war Lagen, basically this is mainly focused on elizabeth ross francis um, and Elizabeth makes some decisions in this book that really cause repercussions. Now, I'm going to be very careful when I when I speak about this because of the monumental event that I referred to earlier on in the book. I'm going to talk about it in a minute after I discuss a couple of other aspects. Um, but yeah, there's there's something that the recent tv adaptation i have to be very careful about and i'm going to be very careful about how i discuss it um as well so fyi okay so three monumental things happen in this book one francis died i was really sad when francis died i was like oh man because i have to admit francis was never my favorite character but i didn't dislike him he was a very interesting guy and as his you know his uncle kind of said to him how sh kind of showed him shall i say how different he is to ross he says to him you know um a miner sees two bosses one who stands from the outside and does nothing and then one who gets in and you know does everything that he does and therefore um is respected by his um by his workers ross is one of them you're the other <laughs> you know who's who's going to get the respect sort of thing and you know it's very clear francis doesn't get involved with the mines or anything so when he gets invited by ross to join him um at wheel leisure he does he really does his best to get involved um and it's going well and everything 
And then just a misunderstanding about where he is and going down the mine, because as I said, in this book about historical facts, they had certain systems to be able to know how many people were down the mine and all this lot. It just, he, you know, it got missed and he died and it was so sad. It was just, he nearly, the fact that he nearly got rescued and didn't, it was, he was that close to living. It was just not fair. And linking back to my first video when I said about how when Francis fell in the water, how that will come to play again in another book, that's, that's, you know, this to do with Francis' demise, a demise and that he falls in the water um, and he's not able to swim. He hangs on to a rusty nail as long as he can and, uh, Sadly, the nail gives way from the wall, right, you know, he hangs on for, I think it's four hours, and not long after, they find him, and it's just like, oh, you, how could you do that, Winston? That is so not fair. So, we've got that to deal with. Literally, like, a week later, maybe less than that, from what I can recall from the book, Elizabeth makes... A choice, you know, spoiler number two of this book, or should I say two, two, <laughs> number two. Elizabeth marries George Warlagan. I read that and I was like, Elizabeth, what are you doing? You stupid girl. You've chosen the man who is just wants you for, you know, money. He, he doesn't even know, okay, he's, he does love her, love her. It's not genuine love. It's not, you know, he sees you as an asset. He, he's, you know, he sees your dowry more than he sees you as a person. He wants control of you because you love Ross and Ross loves you. He wants to screw over Ross. Why can't you see it? Um, but no, she, she marries him. I think mainly she marries him for three reasons. The first, to protect her son. Okay, I give her for that. I give her that. Two, to remain comfortable in society. Uh, I suppose I can understand that. Three, for the money. We're not even going to go there. Um, so it's just a bit like, oh, for crying out loud, Elizabeth. <sighs> right, you've made your bed. You're going to have to lie in this one. Just don't. Don't. Now the third thing. Okay. After Elizabeth has married George, as I said, through you know throughout this book she, and and the previous one, she's been flirting a lot with Ross. She's been turning his head. He's been really focusing on her, and he basically and she basically tells him that she made the worst decisions ever. She should never have married Francis. She should have married him. She could turn back the clock, she would, that kind of thing. And then after she marries, marries George, she sends him a letter basically saying, Ross, should I say, she sends Ross a letter, basically saying that she's changed her mind. She no longer wants him. And that sends him into a fit of rage to the point where, like, Demelza is scared of him. She backs away from his horse because he instantly gets to his horse so to go after her. Um, to speak to her about it. Um, she knows not to go near him. He has to just talk to Elizabeth. Elizabeth is alone in the house. Um, she sent all the servants away. I can't remember exactly why. George is away as well. And they have a very heated discussion, which leads to them sleeping together. Now, the question that Every, I think everybody who has read the books has debated about, uh, you know, <laughs> that needs, that everyone is going to ask, <laughs> did Ross rape Elizabeth? Now, having read the books, I know how I feel about it. I'm not going to discuss it here. Because the like, I I had tried to make this video previously and I watched it back and I wasn't happy because at this point where I started talking about this part, um, it's so complicated. I found myself getting a bit flustered and a bit trying to explain myself, but I couldn't explain myself. I was kind of a bit all over the place. Um, I think it's one of those things 
that you have to you have to either you know read read the book you have to but you have to read the books from the beginning you have to see the entire thing about their relationship you can't just be, literally pick up this one chapter read it and go right what's it what do you what do you think from it you have to see the entire picture of what's been happening in their relationship from day one um so obviously if you haven't read the books but you're watching the tv series you know you again you can't just watch that scene as it were and decide from there what happened um you have to see the full picture uh it's very very complicated it's it's one of those situations where it kind of feels like nobody is right and nobody is wrong in regards to the way in which you feel about it you can't you know criticize somebody who says yes it is rape um for thinking that if you don't think that it was rape it's kind of like i know this is going to sound really strange saying this it's kind of like you know this week here in the uk we've had a eu referendum and it's like i you know i will i will say right here right now in this video and everybody knows me so that i wanted to stay if like you <laughs> you know directly to you you were in the uk and you wanted to leave and i started ranting and getting angry at you about it that's wrong of me to do because that's your opinion and i have my opinion and it's kind of the same with this situation in which it is there's such a gray area about it you can't stand there and get angry at someone for thinking that you know ross did rape elizabeth um um if you felt that he didn't you know it it's it's a really tough call i have to say um i know how i feel about it but i know um you know this new tv um adaptation of hold out they're going to have to be i think very very careful how they play this if they're going to i it may well be that you end up just doing what is stated in the book um you know in a literary comparison sorry i've just thought just now in a literary comparison there is a section of gone with the wind where rep butler is really upset and angry with scarlet because there's this rumor going around that she's having an affair with ashley this man who she's adored since um you know she was a teen and everything and he gets stinking drunk he gets really awfully drunk to the point he he gets really angry at her he threatens to kill her you know he he actually um simulates putting you know his hands on on her head and squeezing her skull until it shatters and she says you know get get off me and she pushes away past him uh and he then grabs her and said you know this is going to be a night where you won't think of Ashley and I will make sure of it. And he picks her up, takes her to a room, and has sex with her. Now, that's the same kind of debate in regards to did he rape Scarlet or did or did he not? You know, uh, you know, in you know, in saying did she allow? Was she happy to do it? Or she, it is such a awkward grey area um it's very hard to talk about so that's all i'm going to say about that i know how i feel about it having read the books and everything um i know how other people feel about it and there are other people who feel completely opposite to how i feel um but i'm not going to get angry at those people um it is the way that they they see it but i think there's going to be when the bbc do adapt you know um it for the new Paul Dark series they're going to have to be very careful they might just do exactly how it's stated in the book and just let the viewers decide on what they think about this situation um but I think I think it's going to cause a big uproar in the fandom there's going to be many people who see it as as one way and there's going to be many people who see it as the other it's the way it's going to be um but yeah it's a very hard situation and as, you know, Aidan Turner said when um, he was quizzed about it by a fan who had read the book, um, he said, you know, I'm not going to give anything away, but relationships are very complicated and this is a very complicated situation. And so that's how I'm going to end this video. Um, <laughs> I, would send, I would end it on a more happier note, um, but that's the way it's got to be because um, 
this is, as I said, you know, sorry again, I'm swearing, this is the book where this shit hits the fan in colossal style. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I'm going to finish there. Uh, and so I'll be back with third video looking at books five and six, which take off, um, I think it's uh, about a year after or something, that where, when the fourth book ends, War Lagan ends, this one ends in 1793. Um, so, yeah. So I will be back with my next pulled up video as soon as I can. And uh, I'll see you guys later. I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know what you think um, of, of these videos. I'd love to I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, I hope I came across okay about the, you know, the colossal situation that happens in this book. It's, a, it's so hard to talk about yet yeah, you know trying to make people understand through a you know a camera when you've got nobody else <laughs> interacting with you i'm so sorry if some of the stuff i came out with is just absolute rubbish um but unfortunately you know it's very hard to, to talk about these these strange hard situations uh that that happen in life um and yeah, so I will be back soon with another video. Um, please give me a thumbs up or thumbs down to let me know what you think of it or leave me a comment entirely up to you. And I'll be back with another video soon. Bye.